I don't think it's as good as Halloween 2018, but I still enjoyed it. Oh, and Bob Odenkirk. I know that's a name that you don't expect to be associated with the Halloween franchise, but I'm going to tell you, I, I just have to get this out of the way. So I'm sitting there as the credits are rolling at the end and just kind of halfway paying attention to the cast list. And the very last one that comes up says the character name of Bob. And then beside it, it said Bob Odenkirk. So I was like, what the heck? <laughs> when was he in this movie? So I did a quick search on my phone and basically this is the rundown so the boyfriend of michael myers sister in the first movie his name i believe this is i believe this is think this is the character his name is bob so they wanted to get some sort of representation of him in the film for this movie yet they couldn't find the actor they couldn't find a way to get legal the, the legal rights to be able to show his image or whatever in this movie. So I can't remember who it was. I don't remember if it was David Gordon Green or somebody else. Did a search online for like Bob 1970 yearbook or whatever. So, something like Bob 1970s year. I can't remember the exact term. But basically they were just looking for a Bob or whatever. And one of the pictures that comes up is a yearbook picture of Bob Odenkirk. <laughs> and they're like, well, we know him. <laughs> we know how to contact him. So they contacted him and got permission to use his image for this movie. And when it showed the image of that character, I didn't, I would never have even guessed that was him. It did not because you just don't make that connection. You don't make the connection of Bob Odenkirk with Halloween. Okay. So getting that out of the way, this film, it veered into territory I was afraid that it was going to veer into. And let's just say, okay, yeah, this is much more brutal than 2018, much more brutal than the 1978 version. Another thing about this is Michael Myers, he didn't mess around. He is fast. He doesn't just leisurely stroll across the ground to come get you. He's moving at a clip. He's not a shambling zombie, in other words. So that felt a little different. It, it didn't... He, he wasn't shambling in the 2018 version, but it just felt like he moved a bit quicker in this one. I don't know if that was just my imagination or what. But anyway, so there were things in this film that were your typical sort of horror film element the jump scares the typical idiocy of people walking into a dark room or a dark house and not turning the lights on what is it with that now in one of those cases it's under i mean that it, that's understandable because there were some flashbacky moments to the events of 1978 some of them actual footage from the movie some of them recreations of some of the characters that you actually didn't see because there was a character that was shown, hawkins is shown in flashback in this in this movie and in the 2018 movie you only hear about his involvement in the events of 1978 so there's a point in time where some cops go into the Michael Myers house in 1978 and of course it's dark because there's no electricity so you know that makes sense but there's other times where people are walking into dark you know doing dumb stuff like that always makes me roll my eyes it's like it's so typical and predictable it's in almost all horror movies and it's just you know I I'm used to it but sometimes it's like can you just like pe have people use a little bit of common sense and flick the light switch. That's all it takes. It doesn't take much. Sorry, I knew I was going to forget something last night. There was another thing that I was meaning to mention that kind of got under my skin a little bit. Didn't make sense. Kind of silly. Take a look at this picture. Now, what hospital has its morgue in full view in a busy hallway on the main floor? 
where anybody could just come by and see it. And not just there on the main floor, but with the blinds completely open. Really? This happened multiple times and I was just like, what? No, that, that doesn't make any sense. There's just no way. Anyway, that was just something I forgot to mention. Okay, back to the review. Whatever. But the, the things that I didn't particularly care for in this movie were the kills got to be okay well they were ridiculous and over the top like a lot of horror kills are the problem was that and i'm you know what these pictures some of these pictures are spoilers and i actually meant to edit that out so sorry about that but anyway maybe i'll title this spoiler ish free the kit okay i love the halloween franchise Halloween 1978 is my favorite horror movie of all time, followed very closely by Halloween 2018. In all honesty, technically 2018 is superior. But after a while, when kills are overdone, it just starts to lose its effectiveness for me. It starts to wear thin and it's like, all right, you know, how many times can you see it? Oh, okay, this is getting boring now. It's just boring to watch people being slashed. Yes, it's a slasher film. But I like slasher films to have meat on it. And one of the things I really liked about 20, uh, the 2018 and the 1978 movie was, well, in 2018, they had more violence that was depicted, for sure. But in both of those movies, it was very heavily grounded in sort of like this unfolding of events. It wasn't fast-paced, rushed, and just people being killed left and right. It wasn't like that. Even Halloween H2O wasn't like that too too much. And that's probably one of the reasons that I, I like that movie quite a bit. But it just, it was over the top and it was just, okay, all right. I can overlook that to an extent because there's other elements in this film that kind of help balance that out. I guess if you're going to go see a Michael Myers film, you want to see a lot of, well, you in general, a lot of horror fans, they like that. They want to see all these kills and they, I like horror, but I don't necessarily like to see just constant. It's just, I want there to be a story. I want there to be interesting characters. I just don't want to see blood flying, you know? So that was a tendency that I didn't care for in this one and also it is venturing into the territory that I've mentioned before of you know Michael Myers just being he's so impossible to kill he's almost like supernatural I mean there's things that that are done to him you could argue that things done to him in the 1978 movie are just always unrealistic well maybe but people have survived far far worse but in this movie, there's stuff done to him that you're like, really? I, I don't know. I just, it, it kind of make it's really, it's just kinda, like you really have to suspend your disbelief a long way when it comes to some of the stuff that was done to him and yet he's still alive. Also, something else that, as another reviewer mentioned, it's like, why aren't you doing stuff like trying to shoot him in the face? You know, that would probably kill him for good. Now, in 2018, he got shot like in the neck or the side of the face or something. It wasn't a mortal wound. But it just feels like there were a lot of opportunities to actually really... I mean, there were so many things done to him. It's just like, how in the world? But whatever. It's a horror movie, and this happens a lot in horror movies. But one of the things that's, that made me not like some of the later Halloween movies, like Halloween 2 and Halloween 4, 5, and 6. Not like 4. 4 is okay, but it 5 and 6 definitely. You know, 4 is probably one of the stronger-ish sequels, but it's not on up there with my favorite. I still watch it whenever it's on. I'll still play it, whatever. But that's one of the things that kind of makes me not care as much for those other movies as... I liked Halloween uh, 2018, I mean 2018, Halloween H20, and Halloween 1978, is that they didn't have completely insanely over-the-top ridiculous stuff that happened to him and he still jumps back up. Like it's stuff you could see as feasible that he could survive it. 
anyway, so there's that. Also, there were some parts in this film that felt a little cheesy. There was a tagline that they kept repeating, evil dies tonight. So basically the town of Haddonfield wants to hunt down Michael Myers and kill him. And so there are certain scenes where the townspeople are getting all riled up and the acting in that to me didn't really feel the best. Honestly, it was a little cheesy and it just it felt a little over the top. But at the same time, I recognized that it was kind of, it sort of made me think of like social commentary type of uh, scenario going on with regard to things like mob mentality and how dangerous the mob is and how people that know better and are trying to stop it, they are completely unheard because they are so overpowered by the number of the mob and the screaming of the mob, you know, literally and figuratively, let's say, in, in situations today. And so there was that element in there. I, I did appreciate that being shown and sort of making you think about the danger of people. At one point, a character yells out or she, or she calls them a bunch of sheep, you know, because they're just not thinking. They're just following along with what the crowd is doing. And that's, that's pretty relevant to a lot of things in society, especially now, it feels like. So I, even though this was filmed before a lot of the insanity that has been happening over the past two years was going on, they, they were filming this in 2019. I remember when it was happening. So I thought it was kind of cool. However, at the time I thought I had read, pretty sure I had read that they were filming Halloween Kills and Halloween, in, Halloween Ends back to back that apparently ended up not being the case and I have no idea why. I don't know why they changed their mind. But they're supposed to start filming the last movie in this trilogy bundle, even though if you include the first Halloween, it's not really a trilogy, right? They're supposed to be filming that pretty soon and I think the release date for that is October 2022. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this ends and I hope it's a resolution that is satisfying or that feels as satisfying as the end of 2018 did, because I was very happy. I mean, I thought that was the end of it. And I would have been fine with that because I thought it was just so well done. It was so, it was so, it was executed so well. Oh shit. <laughs> you scared the crap out of me. Stop. Wait, don't take a picture. Show them the idiocy that's going on in my house. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and you came walking fast, too. I was saying in my review that Michael Myers is walk. He walks very fast in this movie. He's not shambling. You know, in the first movie, he just kind of dawdled along. No, not in this one. Okay. Let me I did finish. It right, ben. I did it right. <laughs> that that did freak me out. I wasn't expecting to see that. Okay, I need to finish. Where, what was I even saying? What was I saying when you walked in and scared the crap out of me? Do you remember? <laughs> Stop staring at me. Don't do the breathing. Go out. <laughs> Go, go! What the heck was I saying? Okay, I'm trying to concentrate. My son is standing over here with stinking Michael Myers mask, breathing very heavily. Hold on. What the hell was I saying? <laughs> Crap. I was talking about social commentary and mob mentality. I think that's what I was saying. There was other stuff I was wanting to say. Okay, Daryl. Did I ruin it? <laughs> Well, I'm trying to... Oh, yeah, and now I'm remembering some other stuff I want to say, so... Scat! Scat, so I can finish. <laughs> it's already tomorrow. I'm trying to finish this for... Yeah, okay. <laughs> what the heck? Is... Oh, um, some other stuff that... Uh, so, I, I think maybe I've touched on most of the things that I didn't really care for about it I, uh, and and also started to blend in stuff that I, I did appreciate, you know, the, the message about mob mentality and all that. Also, 
some stuff that I really thought was cool was nods, um, nods that they did to the 1978 movie. They showed flashbacky things, front footage from the film, like I mentioned, but then they also showed other scenes play out with different characters, characters that have been mentioned in the 2018 version, at least that I remember. And I think what it was, um, the name was Lonnie. He was the father of Laurie's granddaughter's boyfriend. I don't remember the boyfriend's name now, but anyway, so he was mentioned in 2018 because Laurie's son-in-law was talking about Lonnie and how he, he, did, he didn't like him. So he basically didn't like the boyfriend and stuff like that. So in this movie, you see Lonnie, you see him as a kid and you see him as an adult. And he's played by the, and I didn't know this at the time, he's played by the dude that played in Midnight Mass as Joe, the town drunk. And he's actually a pretty decent actor. The girl who plays Lindsay who plays Lindsay in this movie was the same actor who played Lindsay in the original movie. She's not the best actor. I mean, she, she was okay. It was nice to see her back again. Also the character of Tommy Doyle returns. He is not played by the original actor. He is played by Anthony Michael Hall. I had completely forgotten that he was going to be in Halloween in this Halloween movie. I, we went to a panel. Honestly, you know what? We went to a panel that he was in at a con and i'm trying to remember if he mentioned that he was going to be in halloween i can't recall but i had completely forgotten about it and then i was like oh that's him anyway he was okay in here i don't feel like his performance was was the best and sometimes also there was there were characters that were put in here like so let's say lindsay let's say tommy also the nurse from the first movie and it, it's there she is right there it almost felt like some of these characters were just shoehorned in to sort of help with the nostalgia feeling. And so some of that felt like a little bit compressed and rushed, even though I feel like they got adequate screen time for what was going on. There were a lot of characters involved in this story. The character of Laurie and her daughter and her granddaughter, they don't seem to play as big of a part as a lot of these other characters do, which kind of surprised me because Laurie is actually injured for the entire film so she spends most of her time in the hospital so there's that also with regard to one of the main questions that i had before i watched this movie and i'm so glad i didn't watch any trailers because i feel like the trailers gave away far too much but one of the main things i was wondering concerned about was how they were going to explain michael surviving the fire and they explained it. I mean, yeah, so let's say realistically, yeah, he probably wouldn't have, but within the confines of the Michael Myers world, and, you know, that it's still feasible the way they explained it. So I appreciated that. I thought that was pretty good writing on their part. Something else that I liked about this movie was that there were things that happened that surprised me. Characters that were in here that surprised me that they were in here because I wasn't expecting it and I don't want to get too explicit. Also, they were recreating certain things as nods to the original movie, which was kind of cool. Oh, and another thing that I was wanting to touch on and kind of ties in with what I already mentioned regarding the mob violence that happened and basically just sort of a demonstration of how fear can tear people apart. It's kind of a commentary on all the evil that Michael has brought to this town and how it has affected them. It's twisted them and made them do things that were not so good and not listening to people who were trying to instill some rationality. And I mean, there, there's at one point the sheriff dude in here who was also in 2018, the black guy. He, there, there's this one scene where he's just kind of like sitting down on the steps after mayhem has happened and he just looks so dejected and defeated because things got completely out of his control. He's the law, but the law doesn't seem to be able to stand up very well when mobs of people are hell-bent on having their way and going after somebody. So I liked that those that those serious themes were woven into this, kind of helped ground it in a bit of reality. You could identify with certain elements or, or you could understand things that were happening and you could understand the gravity of them. Something else I was going to mention, I already sort of touched on it, was that there were people that showed up in this movie that I was surprised about. 
But when I mentioned that, I wasn't thinking specifically about another couple of people that showed up in here that I was surprised about, which was, it, it'll cycle back around to it, but it was the, the girl who was dressed up as a nurse and the guy that's with her dressed up as like a doctor or something. It took me a little bit to realize that those characters were shown in the 2018 movie. They were, Michael Myers was walking through the neighborhood and they were coming out of their house to get in their car to go off to some party. That was them. And so they have a, a fairly significant role. And I thought that was kind of cool. I mean, I like that they integrated all these different characters back into the story. And I thought that was done in a, in a pretty good way. I appreciated that quite a bit but like I said those elements of the the over the topness with the gore and stuff is just like eh. I feel like if they had scaled that back a little bit it would have made this so much better to me it probably would have like raised it up to the level of 2018 to be honest so I'm hoping that not and I want to clarify that didn't ruin it for me it just made me not like it as much as the 2018 version which i just i love that movie the next movie coming out i'm hoping that they don't amp it up even more because i really feel like one of the things that made the 2018 movie so strong so powerful for me was that the writing was was very good and it was sort of a slow lead up to things that happened it wasn't just thing brutal things were happening pretty much from the beginning and then on. It just kind of took you slowly there, interspersed a little bit with some stuff that was going on, but it was a good story underneath it. And this had a solid story underneath it, but I felt like that was diminished by the excess of Michael killing and everything. So I know that's what Michael does. I know it seems a little weird to be saying this, but maybe maybe you guys will understand what, I, what i'm trying to say anyway this is probably one of my more favorite ish sequels i would say i don't know where i would list it i don't know if i would list it directly below 2018 or below h2o i'm not sure because i really liked h2o i thought that was that was fun but I'm willing to see this again. In fact, when my son uh, is has a day off from work, he, he wants to go see it. So we'll probably go see it in a couple days. And, you know, it's very possible that on a rewatch, I won't have the same impression. This is just my reaction, my first reaction, my initial reaction after having watched it the first time. Sometimes, you know, you kind of have to chew on movies for a little bit, but I kind of have a feeling I'm going to think the same way as, as what I'm thinking now. But anyway, I'm drawing a blank now as far as anything else to mention. I'm sure there's probably stuff because I was thinking of all these different things afterwards and sort of rolling them around in my brain. Oh yeah. Over the top of the, uh, seeing the firefighter made me remember. It, another thing that sort of kind of diminished it for me was when there were situations where Michael took on more than a handful of people and basically killed them all. And that just didn't really, I mean, it, at that point you are bored, you, you are venturing into supernatural territory. I mean, come on. He's just like slaughtering people and folks are just, standing by and not doing much of anything. I mean, even some dude with a, like a, a saw, motorized saw, and he still can't kill. I mean, it just, I don't know, stuff like that. It's like, if they had just like, maybe if he was taking on a little bit less people at a time or whatever, you know, Michael to me is scariest when he's, when it's just him and one other person or him and maybe two other people. It, for him to overpower so many people at a time doesn't really work so well for me. And that happened at least twice in here. Also, there were some deaths in here that I did not expect. At least one death that I didn't expect. It made me roll my eyes when it happened because I was like, oh, come on. But anyway, 
whatever. You know, horror is, it's, it's a difficult genre to do right and to do well. I just really hope that the creators of this will be able to give us a solid finish and actually bring an end to Michael Myers, actually have him die and not kill Lori. I don't want her to die. <laughs> I have a, I was thinking to myself, probably the way it's going to end is they're both going to kill each other. I thought that was going to happen in 2018. But I do want to see him die. I know there will probably be other, other you know, stories of him that, that spawn from this or whatever. But for purposes of this storyline, I would at least like to see him die. Because it just loses its punch when it goes on forever and ever and ever. It just, it just does for me. But, oh well. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's it. I, I don't have any more stuff to say. And I've got quite a bit of editing I'm going to need to do on this before I post it up. I don't know if I'm going to put it up for noon tomorrow or try to get it out before then. But it's already almost 1 in the morning. So, I don't know. We'll see. Okay, guys, that's it for now. Later. Later.